Hi, hello, and assalamualaikum, everyone. My name is Queenie Azela Damayanti, and my student number is one two double zero six double zero double four, and I'm from one B class. I'm a student of English Education Department in Swadaya Gunungjati University. So in this video, I will explain about final test project from Introduction to Literature course with Mam Utut. So let's get it. Hope by Emily Dickinson. Hope is soft or glutton. He fits upon the fair and yet inspect it closely. What abstinence is there? This is the helicon table that never sits but one. And what others consume, the same amounts remain. Biography of Emily Dickinson. Emily Elizabeth Dickinson, also known as Emily Dickinson, was born on December 10th, 1830, and she was an American poet. She is from the state of Massachusetts. She is famous for her poems full of texts and unique words. She spent most of her life at home. And Emily loves flowers and uses them to express her feeling in her poems. At first, she only wrote poetry for personal use and distributed it to those closest to her. Then she began to publish only a view during her lifetime. Then in the end, nearly 1,800 poems that have been written are famous to this day. Analysis of the poem. I believe she means that hope can be both wonderful light in the darkness. To hope for something is not to have that thing. Hope can allow people to abstain from having the thing they want, from getting the object of their desire, and from changing their circumstances. A person can still have hope things will change without doing anything to make it happen, thus upon itself. Biography of Charles Dickens Charles Dickens was born on February 7th, 1812 in Lanford, English, and he was an English novelist from the range of Queen Victoria of Great Britain. Dickens is still popular even today, and all of his books can still be bookcased, and most of his books have also been into film. During his lifetime, Dickens wrote novels with several series a technique commonly used for writing fiction at a time. Every part of the story written by Dickens is highly expected by the public who reads his story. Summary of Oliver Twist's novel by Charles Dickens. This story is about Oliver. He is an orphan since birth and spends much of his childhood at a child farm or orphanage with too many children and too little food. The farm is located roughly 70 miles outside London. One night, after being served his portion of gruel, Oliver asks for a second helping. This is unacceptable, and Oliver is sent to work as an apprentice to an undertaker. Eventually, after suffering repeated mistreatment, Oliver runs away and heads for London. Soon he finds Artful Dodger, who tells him to stay at the house of an old gentleman named Fagin with other boys. Oliver learned, learned that these boys are trained to pick pockets. On an outing, Oliver witnesses the boys take a handkerchief from Mr. Brownlow, an elderly man, which prompts Oliver to run away in fear and confusion. The elderly man mistakes Oliver's behavior for guilt and has him arrested. However, after learning more about Oliver, Mr. Brownlow 
realize his mistake and offers to take care of him to his home. Oliver assumes that he is not rid of Fagin and the pickpockets, but his knowledge of their crimes causes them to seek Oliver out. Nancy, a prostitute and mistress of one of Fagin's men, Bill Sykes, is sent to take Oliver from Mr. Brownlow back to Fagin. She does so successfully, and Oliver is sent on a bullgirling mission with another member of the group to the countryside around London. On this errand, Oliver is shot in the arm and then is taken in by the family or the mailies that he attempted to rob. While he is there, Fagin and a man named Monk split to get him back. Rose Maley, while on a trip to London with her family, meets with Mr. Brownlow to talk with Nancy, who has slipped away from Sykes to explain the plans made by Monks and Fagin to get Oliver back. She describes Monks and tells them when he might more easily be apprehended. Unfortunately for Nancy, news of her betrayal reaches Sykes and he beats her to death. Sykes accidentally hangs himself soon after. The Malice reunit Oliver with Mr. Brownlow, who forces Monks to explain himself. The reader and Oliver are then informed that Monks is Oliver's half-brother and that Oliver is entitled to a large fortune. He received his share of the money, Fagin is hung, and Miley's Oliver and Mr. Brownlow move to the countryside where they spend the rest of their days together. Character and characteristic in Oliver Twist novel. Oliver Twist, the novel's protagonist. Oliver is an orphan born in a workhouse, and his true identity is the central mystery of the novel. Fagin, a confining carry criminal, Fagin takes in homeless children and trains them to pick pockets for him. Nancy, a young prostitute and one of Fagin's former ch child pickpockets. And Nancy is also Bill Sykes' lover. Rose Mealy, a beautiful, compassionate, and forgiving young woman, Rose is the novel's model of female virtue. Mr. Brownlow, a well off, erudite gentleman who served as Oliver's first benefactor. Monks, a sickly, vicious young man, prone to violent fits and teeming with inexplicable hatred. Bill Sykes, a brutal professional burglar brought up in Fagan's gang. Mr. Bumble, the proposed self-important bandel, a minor court official, for the workhouse where Oliver is born. Mrs. Mealy, a kind, wealthy older man, the mother of Harry Mealy and adoptive aunt of Ross. The artful Dodger, the cleverest of Fagin's pickpockets, the Dodger's real name is Jack Dawkins, true no older than Oliver. The Dodger talks and dresses like a grown man. He introduces Oliver to Fagin. Summary of the drama, Sorry, Wrong Number. Sorry, Wrong Number tells the story of Mrs. Stephenson, an invalid woman confined in her bed, who becomes increasingly frantic to the story progresses. The drama begins with Mrs. Stephenson attempting to call her husband, who is working late. Frustrated with the busy signal, she seeks for the help of the operator. Instead of Hearing her familiar voice, she listens on a conversation where two men are plotting a murder. The victim is a woman, home alone, and who lives near a bridge. Horrified by what she hears, Mr. Stephenson calls the operator to demand that she trust the source of this call. The operator explains that only the police can push through a request like that. And so begins 20 minutes of calls to the police, telephone operators, and even to the phone company shift operator as Mrs. Stephenson attempts to alert someone 
to the gravity of the situation. None of the people she talks to will acknowledge that she is in any danger. The drama culminates in a scene where Mrs. Stephenson becomes certain that she is the target of the murder. After all, she lives near a train that crosses a bridge and at home alone. In the final minutes, she hears an intruder listening on the downstairs phone, and then she picks out footsteps coming up the stairs. She hastily calls the police for help. And just before they answer the phone, her therapist screams. The drama ends when the police ask about the nature of the caller's emergency. The killer picks up the phone, explains that he is fine, and says that he never meant to dial the police. He apologized for dialing a wrong number and hangs up. Question and answer based on the drama story wrong number. Number one, where does Mr. Stephenson suddenly go away to on a business trip? It's not stated which city Mr. Stephenson goes for a business trip, only know that his office is in Murray Hill. Number two, what does Mrs. Stephenson offer here on the phone when trying to contact her husband? She listens in on a conversation where two men are plotting a murder. The victim is a woman, home alone, and who lives near the bridge. Number three, in what city the play take place uh, in New York City? Number four, what is the primary motivation for Mrs. Stephenson's killer? It turned out that the killer was her husband. It could be because Mrs. Stephenson is sick and very annoying. Or it could be because he is eyeing her wealth because Mrs. Stephenson is very rich. That's enough for me. I'm Queenie Azela Damayanti. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and have a great day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.